Morning everyone. Hi Marnie, good to see you from Wakefield. We are going to start in about 30 seconds. Okay, good morning everyone. I am Dan Lynn. Uh, welcome to the GCSE lesson. Well, this one is definitely GCSE, but this is important all the way up really from, uh, if you're only good at maths from, GC from year seven, all the way up to GCSE. So it's an important lesson on the highest common factors and lowest common multiples. And it is so easy to get those two things mixed up. And I've seen so many marks missed on these questions in GCSE. So it is something that I think we need to do more practice on than we actually do in, in class at school. So the sooner you can get to grips with this, the better. Okay, from uh, my classes that I teach, I've noticed from the mock exams we're doing, this question, you either got it completely wrong and got mixed up or you got it completely right. So you need to make sure you just, you're absolutely certain what you are doing. Okay, so we're gonna start with some warm up questions, first of all. Okay, so we've got six questions, quite tough today, uh, some tough ones, so uh, let's have a go at those, just do those in your books, on your whiteboards or anything, and then we'll go through those in uh, just over five minutes. Any questions at all, I'll be on the chat, so just uh, send me a message, and uh, let's see if we can get some maths done. I hope you've all had a good Easter, two weeks off, uh, and uh, I know it's strange not coming back to school straight away, uh, but... We're in this weird situation, so the best thing you can do is to keep doing some sort of maths. If it's these lessons, if it's your own work, it doesn't really matter. The only thing I say with these is this is definitely work that you are going to need in your GCSE. Okay, whatever year you're in, if you're in year 10, obviously you need to keep going for next year. If you're in year 11, you do not know how you're going to be given your GCSE grade, so the more work you can do, the better. Any work you do like this, please send photos of it to your teachers, save it in your books just so you can prove I was doing work, I was doing GCSE work. So save everything you've got, you might need it later on. Okay, any question on that, uh, let me know, but have a go at those please. So if you just turn up slightly late, we're just trying to do those questions to start with, and then we're going to start the main part of the lesson. I even bought myself some new pens, so I'm very excited. Which are not very good. Good morning, Rafa Hi from Bradford as well. Nice to have you here.
and Harris with Imani as well, Josh, lots of new people, fantastic to have you here. I'm guessing the pupils in my classes are too cool to put comments on as well, but that's not a problem, please make sure you are working. Look at it. Okay, go on, let's see. Uh, here, here. I'm going to start with. Yeah, yeah, that we want to make up. I need more for this side. It's not just that, but what does he not like people doing? Because he's a good guy, isn't he? So, what kind of things do you hate? Uh, about that guy? Catching Pokemon. He hates people being cool to Pokemon, okay, yeah? Yeah, catching Pokemon. People that catch Pokemon. The bird of speech wing. Brilliant. I love and that. get them choose you first. Get them choose That's great. you first. Put on five and six there because they're so easily mixed up, okay? Those questions, you'll never get both in an exam. You'll get that one or that one, but you're going to know which one is which, okay? Maybe if you covered up that and just did A times A, that might help you to think what A times A is. Maybe you can then work out what A times A times A is, okay? If you are younger than GCSE age, you will not have covered all of this yet. Okay, so do not worry, all right? This is, this is all GCSE work, this one. So think what you can do, you'll come to this later, okay? Today's lesson is about the other stuff. This is for all the GCSE people out that are supposed to be taking their exams very soon, but unfortunately cannot. But uh, just do the best you can with these. Okay, right, I'm going to go through these uh, and then we're going to move into the main part of the lesson. So first one, multiplying fractions. The last lesson with me, we did an adding fraction one. When you multiply fractions, you do not need to make the bottoms the same. In its simplest way, you just times the tops together and times the bottoms together. Now, if you have been taught to cancel down before you multiply them, that is brilliant, you do that. But it's not necessary. If you're happy with it, great. If not, this is what would happen. So you would multiply the 2 and the 3 together to give you 6. And then you multiply the 9 and the 5 together to give you uh, 45. And then you would stop there for the first mark. But this will cancel down. And it's quite tricky to cancel this one down. You need to spot that 3... Go, is a factor of 6 and of 45. If you divide both of those by 3, you end up with 2 out of 15 for your final answer. So one mark if you got this, two marks if you got that at a GCSE standard question. Question 2, 3 squared minus 4 squared. So that was question 1. Question 2, 3 squared is 9 minus 16, you would get one mark if you get 9 and 16, okay, to show you how to square, remember squaring means multiplying by itself, so 3 times 3 and 4 times 4, then you subtract those away, now our brain sees 16 and 9, and we want to write down 7, because 16 take 9 is 7, but it's 9 take away 16, so the answer is not 7, the answer is negative 7, which is what you're looking for there. Three, now a mathematical property a square has that a rectangle does not have. Draw it. If you are not sure, draw the shape. So a square is like that. A rectangle is like that. Okay, you need to be mathematical about this. So something a square has that a rectangle does not have. You can't say all the sides are shorter. What if I drew a smaller rectangle? What if I draw a rectangle like that? 
but not all shorter. So you need to say either all the sides are equal, is an easy one, all the sides are equal, okay? You could also talk about the symmetry, you could say this one has four lines of symmetry, one, two, three, four, a rectangle only has two. So the best answers there you're looking for are all equal sides or four lines of symmetry. You can't say stuff about it being a different shape, it being fatter or squashed or anything like that. You've got to be mathematical about what you say. Right, question four is absolutely a bar method question. So I'm sharing 36 out in the ratio of four to five. So I'm going to draw a bar of four. I'm going to draw a bar of five. So this is my four person, this is my five person, and I'm sharing out 36. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine boxes. So I'm going to do 36 divided by nine, which is going to give me four in each box. Okay, and then this person, the five person, gets five lots of four, which is 20 pounds. And the four person gets four lots of four, which is 16 pounds. So that is that shared out. I'm just checking how much board space I've got. Okay. And the last one says simplify A plus A plus A. Okay, question five. A plus A plus A is 3A altogether. And question six. A times A times A times A is A cubed. So know the difference between those two there. Okay, so those are those questions there. Just check if anyone's got any issues with those. Okay, right, uh, we're going to move on to the next bit. If anyone in my class is handing in mock papers, just e email it to me as soon as possible, please. Right, so factors and multiples, you want to understand the different number definition, definitions. So we're going to get to that in a bit, so you need to know what prime numbers are, what square numbers are, factors, multiples. We need to be able to find the highest common factor of two numbers, and find the lowest common multiple of two numbers. And we're also going to look at some real-life exam-style problems, which are quite tough, some of those. Okay? First bit, essential, you know what those are. And then moving on to the GCSE ones, they could be quite tough, depending how old you are, depending how far you are along in school. Okay, so first bit for you. This is something I hope you can have all have a go at. So we've got some numbers there. I've got ten numbers at the top. And from those 10 numbers, I want you to list, first, for the first question, all the factors of 9. For the second question, all the multiples of 12, and so on. So can you list those yourselves? You just need to get used to knowing what they are and just use them as much as possible. And then you will not forget what you're doing. If anyone had any particular problems with this or with the starter bits, please let me know. Remember, I don't want to spend too much time on the starter work. That is GCSE revision for people that have been doing the GCSE. Okay, right, good luck, up you go.
So I've got a six year old who's uh, doing some work as well. Okay, have we got any problems with these? Uh, one of those people that got them all right as well at the beginning, there were some tough questions there. Okay, right, just a few more seconds on this one. Yeah, there. Super. 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 And then at the. Okay. Yeah. Okay, right, let's go through these. So, factors of nine, okay? Factors are numbers that go into it. But I'll just show you what, what little thing for factors and multiples here. So, if this is looking at the multiples of, fact, of, of eight. So, if eight is a multiple, factors are the numbers that fit into it. So, this one here, one, will definitely fit in because it will go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, those are factors and eights are factors. Well, it's a pair. If you do them in pairs, you won't miss any. So those both fit into that. Two also fits in, because two will go in one, two, three, four. And four will go in one, two times. So they're pairs, they pair them up. You've got to not get these mixed up. It doesn't matter if it says lowest or highest, a multiple is still a multiple. So multiples of eight will be eight, 16. 24, they'd be bigger than 8. Okay, Or the same as 8, because 8 is always a multiple of 8 as well. So just be careful with those. So the answers for these ones. Your factors of 9. Okay, So A, factors of 9. You've got 1 and 9, and you've also got 3. So A is 1 and 9 and 3. B, multiples of 12. Don't forget 12 is definitely a multiple of 12. So it's 12 and 24. See your prime numbers. Now prime numbers have exactly two factors. So one is not a prime number. A lot of people think one is a prime number, but it's not a prime number. So you've got two, because two and one are the only factors for two. You've got three. Three and one are the only factors. Seven. Nine is not a prime number because three goes into it. Twelve is even, so two definitely goes into it, so it can't be a prime number. You've got 13, and that is it. 27 is not a prime number because 3 goes into it as well. It's useful to recognise some of the early ones. Otherwise, just be very careful when you are working out prime numbers. That comes up every year in GCSE. It will ask you something about prime numbers. Okay, It will come up, so understand what they are. Square numbers, I think these are quite difficult to work out. So your square numbers, you've got 1 squared is 1. So that's a square number. 2 squared is 4. That's not on the list, so we don't need that one. 3 squared equals 9. That is on the list, so we need that one. 4 squared equals 16. Not on the list. 5 squared equals 25. Not on the list. So your square numbers are 1 and 9 from that list. And finally, E, your cube numbers. This one, when this one comes up, so many people get it wrong in the GCSE exam. Okay, it is... They're tricky, but you only need to know a few of them. So your cube number is the same as this. You've got one cube, which is one times one times one, which equals one. Two cubed equals two times two times two, which equals eight. Oh. Three cubed equals three times three times three. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. So your cube number is from the list is 1 and 27. That was on a very recent GCSE. It was lists of cube numbers from the list, and the answers were 1 and 27. That was last year's GCSE. So know your cube numbers. There are these little marks that can make a difference between you getting your grade 4 and not getting a grade 4, or obviously higher than that, whatever you are aiming for. Okay, right. 
Uh, okay, hey, just draw a picture of each one now if you can. Okay. Okay. Right, so we're going to look at, uh, we looked at prime numbers. So, highest common factor. Now, the big mistake with these questions is that people read the word highest first and think it needs to be a big number. The important, num the important word is factor. Common means in both. So I want you to try and work out, and you can post this on the chat. You can write it on home if you want to. You can post it on the messages. What do you think the highest common factor of 24 and 32 is? So post your answers. A factor that is common to those two, and it's the highest one. I've read it in reverse, because that is the important word on this question. So highest common factor of 24 and 32, please. Post it on the chat if you can. Okay, we've got some good answers coming in now. We've got 64, 4, 8 and 8. So we've got some very different answers as well. Okay, it's interesting we get so many different answers here. Okay, a 4 and an 8 again. Okay, brilliant. Right, some good answers. So, I just want to start with the 64. So the 64 you've got, you've thought highest there. And you started going 32, 64, you've gone up. And then you thought 24 might go into 64 as well. You're not listing factors there. You are listing multiples. So if we look at 24, the factors of 24 are 24 and 1. We've also got 6 and 4. We've got 3 and 8. We've got 12 and 2. So those are all the factors of 24. Okay, let's look at 32. So 32. Factors of 32. We've got obviously 32 and 1. We've got 8 and 4. We've got 16 and 2. And uh, I think that's about it. So those are your factors of 32. So you first of all list out your factors. And then your highest common factor. So a common factor is one common in both. Two is in both of them. Four is in both of them, so not a bad answer at all. But the highest common factor out of those lists, the highest common factor is eight and eight there. So the answer for this question is eight. So well done everyone that got eight for that one there. Think about what the question is asking you. It's factors. If you list factors and you list all of them, you will get it right. If you look at that word first, you will get this question wrong and you get no marks. Okay, and list some factor because it's worth the working out mark in case you don't get the right one. So we're going to have a go at some of these. These are going to be as hard as they go in GCSE for finding highest common factors. Well, yeah, pretty much as hard as they go, I'd say. So can we have a look at those, please? Find the highest common factor of these numbers. So there's eight questions to have a go at there. You don't need to post these on the chat. Just post it, uh, write them on your own work you're doing, and then we will put the answers on the board in a bit. Okay. If you still get any issues with what this is, please post me a message and I will get back to you with that. Okay, and well done everyone, they got some good answers on that. If you correct answers, well done, Josh got that right. Uh, if you are, some of you are clearly on your parents' accounts, please post your name as well if you post your answer out. Well done, good, that correction, obviously, Camilla there has put a four and then an eight afterwards. Nothing wrong with that at all, because you would have got the right answer you put down in the end. You get the smaller ones first as part of you working out and you keep working to get a better answer. There are some more complicated ways of working this out. If you are happy using that, 
use it. I do not think it's necessary for GCSE. Even for higher, the higher paper, this for me is the best way to do it because it shows you understand what factors are. Some of you might think you can use a factor tree for the, to do this. You can, if you know what to do. It seems overkill for me. It seems you're putting in too much work for the kind of questions that come up. But use whatever you want to get the correct answer. Natasha got that right with an eight as well. Brilliant work. Try to make some of these a bit tricky towards the end as well. So just take your time. You'd be expected to do these kind of ones without a calculator. For the exam questions at the end, you can use a calculator. But for these ones, let's try and do these uh, just using your times tables, your mental maths. But please write stuff down as well. So Jacob and Gracie May done already. Fantastic. Just make sure you've got the highest ones. Okay, do not rush these. Make sure you get the highest common factors. They do get more complicated than this with a calculator. Okay, but their general method is the same. If you know your time tables really well, this is incredibly quick. If you don't, a bit more work for you to do. Right, okay, we will look at the answers for these ones and then move on to the next bit and then we'll look at some hard answers are there. So highest common factor for A is 5, is the highest number that goes into both 25 and 15. When you're using the language of factors as well, so many people say, find a number that goes into it. Try and use factor instead. If you use the language of factor all the time, you won't forget it. So as for parents as well, for any parents watching, when you are saying this to your children, when you say you just need to find a number that goes into it, just say you just need to find a factor. If we're using what I don't say it enough as a maths teacher, so it's, it's lazy a lot of it. Just use the word factor as much as you can. Three for 12 and 9, 20 for 140, 8 for 32 and 40, 12 for 24 and 36, 16 for F. I wonder if a few of you got 8 for F there. Don't forget, 16 is a factor of 16. Okay, so if you've got 8 there, as I suspect some of the ones that whizzed through that 
might have just spotted eight straight away because they're both in the eight times table, they're both multiples of eight. But think about 16. 16 is a factor of itself. 15 for this one and one for that one. Okay, this 17 is a prime number, so your only options are 1 and 17. Now, 17 doesn't go to 24, but 1 does. So there's always a highest common factor. It might be 1. To be honest, in an exam question, it's never going to be 1. Look harder, find something different. It's never going to be 1 in an exam question unless it's asking you to explain something. There's always going to be a nice, quite high factor. I would say your factor is going to be at least 4 for your highest common factor in the exam question. Okay? Right, so, moving on to the next bit, and this is where things get confusing, I think. Okay, I'm not going to give you any help, I want to post your answers on the chat. What is the lowest common multiple of 8 and 6? I have not highlighted any words, I want you to think multiple of 8 and 6. This is a bit for me, when we do these lessons, a bit of concentration, because we've done the first bit, and starts putting wrong answers down for this. Okay, so I've warned you. See, prove me wrong, please. I want you to write the how it's going to start, how the movie is going to start, just the first bit, okay? So the first clip. The first clip, yeah, the first scene you call it, okay? So write the first scene, you can write a description so you can say uh, the hero it walks in and this happens or where does it set? The hero okay. walks in and they discover and he discovers some shocking news and I've just mm -hmm. put dot 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 Lovely, okay. and that time the and shocking then put the TV, news. You put some of the TV, it was like, yeah, write the first scene again and that's when we start the movie. Here comes in and he gets some shocking Okay, news. right, brilliant answers there, okay. Oh. Fantastic, okay. So, the mistake answer, which thankfully no one seems to have done, uh, is if you put in one or two. Because you see lowest, We've just talked about factors, so then the miss one or one. Okay, that is not the right answer. It's got to be like this. It's a list of your multiples of eight. So we go eight, 16, 24, 32, 40. Lists of multiples of six, six, 12, 18, 24, and four in both lists. So my lowest common multiple, or LCM for short, equals 24. Now again, there are ways to do those with factor trees, okay? But I don't like using them because it's really complicated and yes, it always works even for the harder ones. But at GCSE level, you are never gonna need to list more than maybe eight numbers. And if it's a difficult number, it will be on a calculator paper anyway. So you, if, if you've got 24 times tables, you go 24, 48, you've got a calculator to help you. So this helps you understand what multiples are more. Textbooks might disagree with me. We're using factor trees and things like that. If you're happy with that, brilliant. Okay, it's a great method. But it's not necessary and it can take away from your understanding of multiples and factors. So we're going to have a go at some of those and then we're going to look at some quite tough worded problems and then finish with some exam questions. Keep it the good work everyone. So we've got again eight questions. Can you find the lowest common multiple of each of those pairs of numbers please? Okay they do get a little bit tough towards the end. But uh, again, you will be expected to do these without a calculator. So no calculators allowed for this bit. We'll use some calculators for the next bits. Okay, off you go. Any questions? If you're still not sure about anything, please let me know on the chat and I'll try and help you out. Well done, Libby, all right there, keep up the good work. Samantha, correct on that as well. Loads of correct 24s coming in there, brilliant work.
Well, an order, very impressive, 10 years old and doing this. Okay, uh, the next GCC lesson will be potentially to involve too much stuff that you won't have done so far, but uh, I'll get to that at the end. F is quite tricky. Uh, best thing you can do is list your 12s and list your 14s. If anyone is having problems seeing the screen, sometimes when you uh, load up the video, it comes blurry to start with. It, just try refreshing it, reconnecting to the, the same video again, just reloading it, and I hope you get a better picture. Okay, it should, it seems to be working for mine here, I think most of you are okay, but try reloading it if, it's, if you can't see anything. I think you can have a go at the next ones if you want on the board. I think a lot. Okay. I've not, I've not really heard anything, okay. have I? Right. I don't really know what's going on. But I'll watch. Okay, it's going to do another minute and then we're going to. Uh, Move on, I've no idea what the time is. Can I, can I be in charge of the iPad? No, no, I need the iPad, yeah. You can go next door if you want to watch some TV, that's fine. Okay. Guys, so, you can do my work. Yeah, well, I'll check that straight after this, okay? Okay, we're going to move on because I want to get to some of the GCSE uh, style questions. And these questions, it's not a problem. The answer screen will be on and everything like that. Okay, so uh, you have just to go through something like 24 and 30. So if you're on E here, if you are listing 24, you then carefully go to 48, then 
72, then 96, then I'd start the next one. So I'd start your 36s really quickly. Okay, they're not going to make you spend hours and hours doing this and wasting your time in the exam. So uh, the answers are as follows. So you've got 15, 12, 21, 9. Watch out for that one again. A few of you may have got 18 for that one, maybe. Okay, or maybe even 20 multiple of itself. So please be careful with ones like that. 72, 84, I think that's a tough one there. 20 and 96. These are as tough as you would get without a calculator of GCSE. On a GCSE question, you can very often get more difficult numbers, but you've got a calculator to help you out. The method is the same and use that calculator. There's no hero points for not using a calculator and just say you can do it in your head. Okay, right, so the next we're going to look at, before we put some exam questions up for you, is to do with problems. So the first problem, okay, we've got here. So there's quite, so we've got two flies, Ali and Beth, are flying around a building at different speeds. At 9.30am, they are right next to each other. So by that I mean, if this is your building here, Say to you, bother to draw the windows on. So, this is your building here. At 9 30 a.m., they are spinning round and round there, round and round the circle. At 9 30 a.m., they are both there. So, both flies are exactly next to each other. So, one fly and two flies. They are both right next to each other at 9 30 a.m., and they keep flying round. But one of them goes faster than the others. So they say they decide to stop for a chat the next time they are right next to each other. So Ali takes 18 minutes to fly around the building. So it's a big building. So Ali goes flying around the same circle. Every 18 minutes, he gets round. Beth is slightly faster. She goes 15 minutes around the building. So she goes quicker. Okay, so this is already a complicated question. So the question is, at what time will they stop for a chat? When will they both be round this, at the same place again? Okay, remember, Ali takes, so A takes 18 minutes. That's not quite going to fit on, is it? A takes 15 minutes. No, he doesn't. Ali takes 18 minutes. A takes 18 minutes. B takes 15 minutes. Okay, at what time will they meet again? So this is a tricky question. You can use a calculator for this one if you want. Be warned though, calculators and time do not work too well. So just be really careful with what you're doing. Okay, so off you have a go. If you need any help, please put a question about I want to know what you've done. Don't just say, I'm stuck, I can't do it. Say, I've tried this, I'm not sure what to do next. Okay, so suddenly we've risen the level a lot here. We've got to a much tougher problem solving level.
Now, bear in mind what the lesson has been on, highest common multiples and uh, lowest common multiples and highest common factors, this is probably going to be something to do with that. Okay, so you're going to spot, is this to do with factors or multiples? 9.30, so think about 15 minutes, I would definitely list your multiples for A, multiples of 18, and your multiples of 15. So add your multiples, Get write your multiples together, write your multiples out, write your multiples out, that will tell you when the flies are going to meet again. This is quite a common problem solving question. Maybe not flies flying around a building, but this kind of process, and this is what we use multiples for. And remember what the question is asking you. It doesn't say how many minutes. It says, uh, what time will they meet again? I just, this, this class is only about 10 minutes left. Uh, we stop after an hour and I will be doing this to keep doing these lessons all the way for a week. Uh, two for GCSE, two for uh, primary school. Every week until my school opens again and then I'm afraid I'm not going to have time. Right, let's look at this one. So, A takes 18 minutes, B takes 50 minutes. So you add together your 18s. You add together your 15. So your 18s are going to go 18, 36. Remember, you can use a calculator for this. 54, uh, 62, 72, 90. So that's your 18. So this is Ali. That's whenever he'll get back. And then Beth is going in 15. So 15. 30, 45, 60, 65, uh, oh, 65, sorry, 75, 90, and you've got a match. So after 90 minutes, they will meet again. So in terms of marks for this, if you list out some multiples, you get one mark out of three. So you get one mark just for realising it's to do with multiples. If you get the answer of 90, you get two marks. The third mark is for reading the question. And I would always, once you've worked out your answer, read the question again. So at the end, don't read it twice at the beginning, at the end. So the question actually says, at what time will they stop for a chat? At what time? So if they start at 9.30, so we've got 9.30 a.m. plus 90 minutes. You cannot use a calculator for that. But you think 90 minutes, well, if I add 30 minutes on, so if I plus 30, I get to 10 a.m., then I've got another 60 minutes left. So this is 30 plus 60. Another 60 minutes left will take it to 11 a.m. So that crucial fly chat will happen at 11 a.m. Okay? Right, so that's the question there on a kind of problem to do with highest common factors and lowest common multiples much tougher but it's using the same kind of skills okay right uh, we are going to have a look I want you to have a look at some of the uh, exam questions now so oh, should we do this one we're not going to do that one uh, right okay so there's some past paper questions okay I've put these already I'm going to put them on the chat again now just so you've got them I want you to have a go at these. If you printed them out already, that's fine. You can do them off the screen. Uh, the first one is on the board there. Please use a calculator for these. So the first one is find the highest common factor of 60 and 96 and also work out the lowest common multiple of 60 and 96. Please use a calculator for these. You are not expected to do this in your head. That is a past exam question from a GCSE paper. Okay, and as I've said before, these questions, lots of people get them completely wrong because they do the wrong thing. 
So have a go at that one to start with. If you want to brush on, this is just from that sheet that I've attached already. I will put it on the chat so you've got all the questions you want. But have a go at that one. We'll go through that one in a bit. Remember, use a calculator, please. Okay, I'm just posting that on the main comment chat now as well in case you can't find the questions. But just have a go at that one for now anyway. Really well done, those ones that got the fly question, right? Brilliant. Okay, that is not an easy question at all. Not an easy one. That comes up on GCSE. You're not getting many people getting that right. A lot of schools just panic with that and get it wrong. So really well done. Right, we're just going to finish off by going through these uh, two questions here. I've got my wonderfully technical calculator found in my uh, son's toy box. Uh, so we'll see if this works. Right, highest common factor is 60 and 96. So these are completely separate questions. They look the same, but they're separate. Okay, so 60 and 96. So factors of 60, okay? We're looking at 6 and 10. We're looking at 20 and 3. We've got... Uh, uh, 4 and 15, uh, what else have we got, uh, 12 and 5 as well, so those are your factors that go into 60, those are your factors that go, uh, that we want to find for 96 as well, so 96, okay, more facts, and you can use a calculator to check these, so you list all your factors, and the fact you're looking at really is, is going to be 12 because you've got 8 times 12. So the fact you should get for that one, your highest common factor is 12 for 60 and 96. Remember you had a calculator. I know some of you probably did that without a calculator. Brilliant. Okay, and the last one, we've got, uh, so 60 
and 96. This time we are looking at multiples. Oh, I missed that. Uh, 60 and 96, so your multiples. Use your calculator. So we've got 60, 120, 180, uh, 240, 300, 360, uh, 420. So you list some of those. And then you're going in 96s. So we've got, start again here, so 96, we've got 192, remember you're looking for a match above, 288, 384, 480, and I can actually see I'm going to get a match there from 480 is my lowest common multiple. So again, if you can use factor trees for this, which is something different, Brilliant, but it doesn't take much time with a calculator. Okay, I hope that was useful to you. I hope with some practice, some of you found that quite easy, which is fine. It's the kind of thing you need to keep practicing. The lesson on uh, Thursday for GCSE will be quite a bit more advanced than this. It's going to be sequences, algebraic sequences. So it will be quite challenging. So by all means, come along if you want. But I maybe check the exam questions I'm going to post before the lesson to see if you think it's something you can access. If you are doing GCSE, if you are year 9, 10 or 11, definitely it is going to be appropriate for you. Really important for GCSE because it's another one of those topics that if you don't practice, you completely forget what to do. Okay, so please complete those exam questions, the sheet there you've got. I'll post it on the chat, I think I can do it on my phone if you can't find it. And email your teachers with your work, particularly me if I teach you. So send me your work, I will mark it, I will check it for you uh, and keep working. And also make sure you and your family stay safe. Thank you very much, I will see you next time. Have you finished that, eh? Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, no.